Hey guys, welcome back to another video from Let's DevOps. Uh, today's video is going to be a continuation of our previous video. We just got started with the Azure DevOps series. And as a quick recap, the first episode was about how you get started with your first um, Azure DevOps pipeline. There are different ways with which you can get started and we have pretty much covered all of the different ways with which you can get started with your first Azure DevOps pipeline. Uh, this video is going to be a continuation, as I said. In today's video, we are going to see how you can execute your first Azure DevOps pipeline, but not using the uh, Azure hosted um, agents, but uh, to get pipeline executed on your self-hosted agent. As in, if you have a local machine, let's say your Windows laptop, or you have a Linux environment in your laptop and you want the pipeline to get executed in that machine, then how do you configure this self-hosted machine as a runner? And then you let Azure DevOps pipeline know that you need to get the pipeline executed on this specific machine and not on uh, Azure's uh, hosted machines. If this sounds interesting, uh, please do hit a like, share, and do subscribe to the channel. Without wasting much time, let's get started. Uh, right, so as you know, this is the Azure DevOps portal, and I have an organization, SK16, uh, and there's a pipeline that we executed uh, here. If I get into the um, repos, there should be a Azure Pipelines.yaml file, which is basically your pipeline configuration as a code uh, file and in this file is where we specify something called as pool and specify which agent we want the pipeline to get executed in currently this is using the um, azure hosted agent so in the pool you have a vmi image argument and then you specify ubuntu latest we saw what are all the different hosted agents of azure in the previous video if you want to know please go check out the previous video but if instead you want this pipeline to get executed on your machine. Uh, for people who have been following our channel, they know that we are using a Ubuntu environment on a local uh, machine. And uh, let's say I want the pipeline to get executed on this Ubuntu machine, then what is all that I need to do? As is always with the case with um, different pipeline tools, you need to get a runner registered here on this machine so that Azure knows that this is your self hosted machine. How do I get? Uh, a runner registered here uh yeah let's look into it first let me create a folder specifically for azure devops i just did that so there should be one for azure devops where is it yeah here so i see into azure devops i already tried with uh doing it once but let's create one more so let's go ahead let's let's leave it here now well, let me jump back to the azure devops portal so any pipeline uh, the modern day pipeline tools provide you with the steps of how you can get your self-hosted runners installed and likewise azure devops also provides you what i'll do is i'll want a new runner this local runner to be registered on the organization level which means uh, any project that i create under this organization will have access to this self-hosted runner so organization level which means sk16 and then organization settings i scroll down there you see pipeline section and then you see agent pools by default there would be two azure pipelines and then the default um, but it makes sense to create your own pool because in the real case scenario you you would be dealing with multiple pools and multiple agents within each of the pool so makes sense to properly classify each of the pool so let's go ahead and add a pool self-hosted yes and let me give my local this time optional i go ahead and create so my local pool is created if i get into it uh, and look into the agent section there is no agent currently let me create a new agent there you go it gives you the steps of what you need to do to get the agent installed uh, if i go to linux because linux is the os um, and you can choose which architecture you want i will go with the x64 and we need to get the agent downloaded first into the machine where we want to register uh, there you see a download button which means if you want this windows machine itself to be your agent then you just give the download and it comes to your uh, laptop and then we want to get it inside the ubuntu machine so what i'll do is i will copy the url let me create another folder here just so we don't get confused with what's already there uh, we'll put it as uh, my local so we create a folder 
my local and we navigate to my local and then here let's go ahead and download the agent dot tar dot gz right as it downloads uh, that's basically what it says it just asks us to create a folder navigate to the folder and basically copy the tar.gz and then extract all right so good now let's run the extract command it's this and uh, let's update the location it's basically on the current folder so dot and boom there you go it quickly gets extracted All right, so there you go. You see that the contents of this tar.gz is extracted. Now let's come back. All right. Now what do you do? You have to then run this config.sh. So basically configure the organization Azure DevOps URL that we have. And uh, all right, let's actually run through the steps so that it's even more easier for you to understand. What you do is just execute sh config.sh or right, dot slash config.sh. I accept all stuff. Enter server URL, which is the server URL. It's dev.azure.com with your organization is the key here. Um, I am not sure if it has mentioned to it. Okay, they don't. They haven't mentioned it, but that's the key. Don't just put the dev.ashu.com because that becomes then pretty common and generic. You have to always add your organization uh, for the to, to the URL. Enter, enter uh, authentication type. Uh, press enter for PAT. PAT is nothing but a personal access token. And if you want to go uh, with a personal access token as your authentication type, hit enter. Yes, we want to use PAT. How do you get a personal access token? So come here to your um, account, user settings, personal access token, new token, my local, you can give it uh, n number of days that you want the token to be um, the validity of the token. And I'll probably give full access, doesn't harm. But if you're doing this on your production instances, then make sure that you give scope only to what is required. This being a playground demo environment, I'm just giving it full access, but always keep in mind, you need to uh, think through the RBAC, role-based access control, before giving uh, full access scope to any of the technical users uh, you are uh, uh, creating. Right, create, I have the token, I copy it, go here, enter the token, gets registered perfect uh, enter the agent pool our agent pool is my underscore local because i want this agent to get registered under that pool if i don't give any value it goes and sits into the default pool which we saw a little while before i can also show it once again uh, agent pools there you see if you don't specify anything it goes and sits in the default if you specify my local then you'll find your agent registering here all right my local enter enter the agent name okay uh, my local ubuntu boom there you go that's good enter work folder press um i mean um, enter work folder is basically uh, where the workspace in jenkins terms it's the workspace so just give the default one or if you really have a specific location let's say you want all of the pipeline uh, workspace to sit under this azure devops you could give that but for now i just hit enter all good now if i go here there you go my local ubuntu is now showing as one of the agents under the my local agent pool but it's offline and to get it online there's one final step that you need to do which is run the run.sh that is also available in the same location enter back refresh refresh there you go it's online and here it is listening there are multiple ways just like we saw it for other uh, uh, CACD tools like the bitbucket you can also execute this and run it as a detached mode so that so that it runs as a 
backend process and doesn't really uh, hold any screen in an interactive way right so while this is being executed let's quickly test it on a actual pipeline to see what uh, changes you need to do to the pipeline script to let the pipeline know that hey you need to execute it now on my local ubuntu and not on the self-hosted um, azure agent let's pick yeah, maybe this itself project um, uh, itself i go to repos and uh, to the pipeline configuration.yaml now you have pool and then you have specified the vmi image instead of the vmi image you just need to change it to name and specify the uh, pool name which is my underscore local uh, you might wonder should i also specify the agent name no right now you don't need to because in the uh, pool my local is it my local let me quickly check yeah it is my local so um, under in the my local pool there's just one agent which is my local ubuntu in case there are multiple agents then you might have to specify uh, the agent name also so that it knows which pool which agent specifically but since in this case we just have one agent sitting under uh, my local pool this should be good enough for the pipeline to get kick started and then execute on this machine now how do we really test that it is getting executed on this machine and not on the self-hosted agent maybe we'll add some um, yeah uh, we'll add some uh, shell commands uh, like uh, pwd it should show my ubuntu folder uh, location maybe we can also add who am i uh, so that it shows the user of my ubuntu which is sk this way we can confirm that it is actually executing on this machine right so far so good let's go ahead and commit and since it's configured as continuous integration trigger the pipeline should get kick started instantaneously as it does and if you get in permission needed what permission okay permit mm -hmm. that was interesting i don't know why it asked for a permission probably asks for the very first time it executes all right now the pipeline has started and stuff is happening i'm more interested to see okay it failed probably because maven okay there is some build failure with the maven so what we can do is very quickly i'll kind of swap my just a small hack i'm just swapping my tasks so i want the bash to run first and then to maven and let it fail on the maven all i'm interested in is to see whether it's getting hit on my local and to confirm that just the bash task is good enough so again i go here yep let's run through the bash sometimes it takes time for the logs to load all right there you go home sk azure devops my local because we gave i want the present working directory present working directory confirms it's uh, happening on my local we also hit an who am i which is sk as the user and then ls hyphen ltr which has checked out the code so perfect if i also copy this go to my local we can actually double check cd there you go the code has checked out in this location under azure devops my local underscore work folder and then it's sitting there right uh, that's the end of this video um, i hope this was helpful and will help you get started with your azure devops journey uh, see you in the next video until then take care have a nice rest of the day bye, -bye.